This is Hi, Leah. Leah Hi. is. Hi. <laughs> she's the inspiration behind the Angel of Hope Engagement mm -hmm. Center. This was on her door before I even received her to my home, and 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 it was just a uh, uh, Leah, the Angel of Hope for children. So what that meant was whatever I did for her, I was going to do for other children, mm -hmm. and that's it. Wow. Wonderful. Yeah. Well. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Lenny Orlov. I use he, him, his pronouns, and I'd like to welcome you to, well, welcome you as an age-friendly champion for, for joining us here at, on Close to Home. Today, we'll meet Alicia Kennedy and learn about Women United, an organization that's providing support to grandmothers caring for grandchildren. Uh, we'll also hear a very brief update on vaccinations uh, and Washington State reopening. I'm in a very brief update and hear from our sponsor, the Seattle Public Library. If you find this uh, kind of events, these this kind of programming of value, please consider subscribing to our channel on YouTube. It's at Aging King County. Uh, and um, uh, first, though, uh, I would like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional land of the first people of Seattle, the Duwamish people, past and present. We honor with gratitude the land itself and the Duwamish tribe. Uh, and we want to invite you to visit the Duwamish tribe uh, website, which is at duwamishtribe.org, to learn more about the Duwamish people of the inside who are still here and uh, find out how you can get involved. And, and we thank you for that. Uh, and as we move to the next slide, uh, I, I want to uh, introduce my crew to you. Uh, and it's a crew of many. And so here in the studio, we have uh, Gita Hamam, Justin England, Karen Winston, Meg Wolf, and Michael Tiller Jett. And then I'm again, your host, uh, Lenny Orlov. Uh, if there are questions that you have that are beyond what Alicia will be presenting about Women United, uh, beyond what the library, what services they have to offer, uh, there is a community uh, organization network that uh, can help with other questions related to aging and disability uh, and can offer services and resources such as food and meals and, and rent assistance and minor home repairs. Uh, they're called Community Living Connections. They're at one 348 5464 uh, and uh, they are at communitylivingconnections.org capitalization not important so uh, please use that network uh, it's uh, uh, it's organizations in your community uh, that you can uh, you can actually walk in uh, and receive services you don't have to call the 100 number but that's a centralized call-in center for them uh, on the next slide, if you're watching us online, uh, I'm presenting about the sister program for Close to Home. Um, and uh, that's uh, the Civic Coffee Hour, which has been around for a lot longer. Close to Home showed up in 2020 when there wasn't a lot happening online and we were asked to stay home. So hence the name. But the Civic Coffee Hour has been around for over a decade. Uh, and and that uh, the goal of that program is to bring community elders closer to government leaders, uh, so that you know questions can be asked, uh, feedback provided in a direct forum. And it's always been an in-person event, and we've done it in a variety of locations. Most recently at the Central Building in downtown, when we outgrew that space, when we had additional folks joining us that speak other languages, languages other than English, we. Um, we're lucky to uh, secure uh, partnership or sponsorship from the Seattle Public Library. So with that, we moved into one of the really great spaces over in the library. And the library stayed on as our uh, co-sponsor even during the pandemic. And, and, that, but, and so the benefit of that is, is hearing about what the library is doing and how they're reopening and, 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 what, uh, and what their updates are. Before turning it over to our uh, library partner, uh, I, I do want to invite you to come back next time uh, on July 15th. Uh, 
I think this is a much anticipated update on uh, 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 coronavirus um, in general, but but also on vaccinations, on variants, uh, on on how public health is administering. How are they handling this this real major happening, this major event of our lives that's taken over our lives? Uh, we'll we'll get an inside look at um, you know long term care facility support from. Uh, Shauna Clark, who is a registered nurse uh, with uh, Public Health Seattle and King County. And we'll hear about what epidemiology and immunization does from James Lewis, MD, MPH, uh, also with Public Health Seattle and King County. And, and you'll access it the same way, bit.ly forward slash hfriendlylive, and each word is capitalized there. That's always going to be your hub for accessing our events whether they're virtual or eventually we move on to hybrid events that's that's our dream uh, you'll always be able to get in through there uh, regardless of platform that we're using and that will also have the most updated instructions on how to use language access and how to access these events in general um, so if you navigate there before the event, you know, anytime really 24 seven, you can click on the instructions and check it out. And you can also view previous episodes in the embedded YouTube uh, playlist there on the same page if you missed any of our events live. As I mentioned, though, both of these are produced uh, in partnership with the Seattle Public Library. So next up, I, I want to uh, welcome to the stage Nancy Sloat, who is the Older Adults Program Manager with the Seattle Public Library or uh, the uh, the special agents for age-friendly things over uh, at the Seattle Public Library. Uh, Nancy, we value your partnership so much, um, your, yours in particular, but the libraries in general. Uh, and we, you know, we're we're trying to do even more as we begin to reopen. And that I believe is what you have for us today. So without further ado, uh, please uh, take it away. Uh, good morning, everybody. And thank you, Lenny. Um, so I am the Older Adults Program Manager at the library. And I uh, work on creating programs and uh, services that are age friendly and of interest to older people in our community and to make sure that our services are accessible to everyone. Um, I also work with the many organizations in King Seattle and King County that work with older people as well to see how we can support their programs. Um, so it's great. I um, At the beginning of these programs, I always give an update on the library and our road to reopening and any cool services that are happening at the library, new things to get at the library. Um, and I also just want to say how much I appreciate our partnership with um, Age Friendly Seattle and Seattle Aging and Disability Services and uh, my Age Friendly, the Age Friendly crew, Lenny and Meg and everybody else who's hosting and behind the scenes today. So uh, could I have the next slide? Um, we are definitely opening up more and more branches. And as of this morning, because it seems to change daily, we have 17 branches where you can have in-person services. So you can walk in to the library and actually four more branches are opening next week as well. So that means we'll have 21 of our 27 branches open for in-person services. Um, some of the smaller branches, um, they may be your home branches like uh, Madrona or the Wallingford branch or Fremont. Um, they weren't uh, uh, during the, um, the limits placed on in-person services. They weren't physically big enough to have in-person services. And for a long while, we were also quarantining materials and books that had been returned to us. So there just physically wasn't enough space. But we will be working um, very quickly to open all of the branches. And I'm sure some of you um, may have been to an air-conditioned branch um, during this last weekend and on Monday. And the library, as with so many organizations, um, tried to respond to the heat and we opened as many branches as possible that had air conditioning so people could use those as cooling centers. And I know that the library 
if we um, do have another heat wave like that or um, at any point, if you just want to get cool, the libraries are a great place um, to do that. So could I have the next slide? So what can you do now? You can do almost anything that, you, that we did pre-pandemic um, in the branches. So for me, the most important thing is being able to browse um, because I love discovering materials that I hadn't known about before. Um, of course, you can use computers, you can get tech help, you can get your reference questions answered. Um, you can use some accessibility software on our computers. We have um, magnification software, we have JAWS, which is text to speech. Um, you can, on some of the branches, uh, you can actually check out a laptop to use in the building itself. Um, photocopying, scanning, pick up your holds, use our Wi-Fi. Just, you could sit in the library and read a magazine and newspaper. I know a lot of people enjoy that. Um, could I have the next slide? Um, yeah, so thanks, thanks Lenny. So while um, uh, we still have a couple of branches that are not open yet, and you can still pick up your books there um, and, and any materials you've put on hold. And we call that curbside pickup. Um, and uh, basically, you put a hold on a book. You wait for the message to come that it's ready. You go to that branch um, and you walk up and you get, get your materials and the staff will check it out. Um, if, you, um, if it's uh, too difficult to get out of the car um, or wait online, then you can actually call the branch once you're there and staff will check out the materials for you and bring them to your um, car. Um, one of the really fun uh, types of materials we have, we call them uh, peak picks. Um, these are fabulous, um, really uh, high interest, high circulating, um, you know, where there are holds lines on them. We buy many, many extra copies of those books and um, you can check them out for two weeks at a time. Can't put a hold on them. Um, and uh, I, I just went and looked at some of the newer ones that have been put on the peak, peak picks list. There are about 50 plus books out there. Um, Stacey Abrams' new book, uh, she's actually written a legal thriller. And um, I don't know how she has time to do it, but uh, that's on my list to read. Um, and so there's just lots of books to discover and titles that uh, would normally take you a, a longer time to get if you put a hold on them. Um, could I have the next slide? So we call our opening process the road to reopening. And because things are changing so quickly, I just encourage you to go to the web address that I've put up on the screen, which is spl.org slash road to reopening. Um, and you will find there the exact hours of a particular branch and the days that um, the branches are open. And not all these branches are open every day of the week like they used to be, but we're working on that. Um, you could also call our quick information line. That's our phone reference. And that's 206-386-4636. Um, and the staff there, the library staff, will be happy to tell you what's open, what's your closest branch, et cetera. Uh, could I have the next slide? So starting literally, oh, that's okay. We'll keep it on the Discover Pass. But starting today, literally, we have 100% capacity um, in the buildings um, following public health guidelines from and Washington state guidelines. So that's great. There are no capacity limits in the library. And um, we still at the moment are requiring uh, people to wear masks, staff and patrons will be wearing masks. So this is one of the coolest things that we've got recently. It's been going for about a month now, but I just want to make sure everybody knows about it. We um, have a Discover Passes, which are the access to the state parks and the thousands of miles of trails and the wildlife areas, um, et cetera. And um, many libraries in Washington state are now able to provide these Discover Passes. There's a limited number. You have to put them on hold um, to get them. But um, instead of having to buy an annual pass for 30 or $35, you can have a free pass from the library and it'll check out for two weeks. So 
uh, that's just a cool thing. I love what libraries do. Um, can I have the next slide? Um, and the next slide, if we can get to it, is uh, called, uh, it's about our summer book bingo program. It's a reading, reading uh, program for adults. Um, there are 25 squares, and uh, each square has a different type of book that you need to um, read, like a book that made you laugh, for example, or a book which takes place in an Olympic host city. So um, you read those books, you, uh, you add the titles to the card, and if you get a bingo, then you can submit your card um, into a drawing for uh, some prizes. If you do a whole blackout, then uh, there's some grand prizes, which are um, uh, tickets to a subscription to Seattle Arts and Lecture, their whole author series um, for this coming up year. And uh, Seattle Arts and Lecture is our partner on this project. So could I have the next uh, card, uh, slide, I guess. Um, so Summer of Learning, um, as many of you may know, um, is a program for kids and teens. And the reason why I'm bringing this up here is because some of you, many of you may have younger people in your lives, and it is such a fun program um, to do. Um, some of you may know Summer of Learning as uh, summer reading. Maybe you even did it as kids. Um, and uh, so the library has been doing this for over 100 years, having a Summer of Learning, uh, Summer Reading. And um, it's really transitioned um, over the last couple of years into a whole sort of process of discovery, not only reading books, but there's a lot of things that we can learn about outside of, out, outside of books. And this year we're involving the whole family. It's kind of an intergenerational program. And um, we're also giving away thousands and thousands of books to um, BIPOC youth and ELL learners, immigrant and refugee families, um, youth that are insecurely housed. So um, the, the focus for this year is uh, what's your story? And um, you create a poster. And what's so nice is that don't be surprised if a younger person um, that you know wants to interview you as an older person. Um, and as sort of a community elder um, and asks about your childhood or asks for, uh, asks for your favorite pieces of advice and the wisdom that you've got. So that's why I wanted to just make sure that you knew Summer of Learning was happening this year. Um, so uh, I hope you get some interaction with some younger people. And you can get to uh, all the information about Summer of Learning. I don't have it up there as uh, on the slide, but it's uh, spl.org slash Summer of Learning. And then uh, the next slide um, is, um, this is a program, our Low Vision Book Group, that's been going for years and years. It's a monthly book group. Um, and you do need to register for it. And it's a conference call. So it's not a, not a virtual program. Um, the next book group book is coming up uh, and session is on July 13th at noon and reading Educated, the wonderful memoir by Tara Westover about her experience living in a survivalist community in Idaho and how she got out of that community. Um, and then my, the next slide, we're, we're almost at the end here. I just want you to visit um, the web pages on the library website that um, have a uh, list the programs and services and resources for older people. Um, it's uh, called Next Chapter is our program title. Um, and that's spl.org slash next chapter. And then finally, I just want you to invite you to contact me if you have um, questions or ideas about um, uh, our older adults program. I would love to talk to you. And I think the final slide has my email address on it. So thank you very much, everyone. And I'm so looking forward to hearing about Alicia's program. 
So thanks. Thanks, everyone. And back to you, Lenny. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Nancy. Once we get this up on YouTube, we'll uh, we'll link to some of the story times that you're doing uh, as as they get uploaded. We've we've been doing that, and so we'll continue to do that. And you know, we look forward to you know someday soon, uh, maybe being in a branch for this. And uh, a central branch is probably not open for events yet, but. Uh, Maybe soon. We'll see. All right. Thank you, Nancy. We appreciate you stopping by. Uh, and uh, let, we'll move right along to our next uh, topic. Uh, as I mentioned, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time uh, on this topic uh, because in in just a, a little short time on the 15th, we'll, we'll hear um, the experts uh, about this. I just want to uh, remind folks about this web page and the web page is coronavirus.wa.gov that's the website that's been set up by washington state department of health uh it's been set up uh for over a year now and it has the the latest updates not no real changes to this website this is the same thing we we shared with you last time i uh, just wanted to share with you the phone number that uh, you can call if you're uh not uh looking for this information online uh, that uh, phone number is it's one eight hundred five two five zero one two seven. You can ask any questions about uh, COVID nineteen uh, pandemic, and they will provide uh, information. Uh, you can find out where vaccinations are available uh, at that number, but also you can text from your cell phone. It doesn't have to be a smartphone. Any phone. Uh, to a short number, 438-829, with your zip code, and you'll immediately get a couple of locations that actually have vaccines in stock. And we're talking about vaccines that are uh, now uh, available to anybody who is 12 years and older. And, uh, you know, listening to the news on this, I, I know that communities that have high vaccination rates also have low uh, COVID case rates. So that's, uh, the, the vaccines seem to be working. The state of Washington is officially open. One thing um, I shared last time, it's that there is the Life After Vaccine site. That they It's constantly updated. There's certainly questions that come up for folks. You know, what if I'm vaccinated, but somebody in my household isn't? That kind of thing. Those are answered there. Uh, I also in anticipation of uh, our presentation next time, uh, I wanted to share the, the King County site for you. And, and they have a long uh, URL that we'll share, but for those on the phone, it's just kingcounty.gov. Uh, and the first thing you see is um, some information on, you know, uh, what does it mean that we are reopened? You know, can you still be required to wear masks sometimes? And it depends. It depends on the business, on the setting and things like that. So uh, we welcome you to take a look at that. And again, come back uh, on July 15th and hear a lot more about it. Um, and uh, we look forward uh, to you joining us for that. But today, uh, I, I do want to... Uh, go on to our, our, our main speaker, uh, Alicia Kennedy. So Alicia Kennedy was born and raised in Seattle, Washington, and comes from a large family of 10 children. Uh, as a single parent of two boys, she managed a full-time career at CenturyLink Telecommunications Company, where she retired from in 2013 after working there for 37 years. She started her career as a telephone operator and then retired as an executive office manager. Uh, I'm sure you'll hear a lot more about uh, Alicia's caregiving journey that eventually inspired what is now Women United Seattle. But I just want to mention that Alicia's work has been honored and recognized by the Seattle community. Her list of accomplishments includes uh, the Unsung Hero Award, for her kinship caregiving community work, uh, coverage on numerous local TV news programs. She was also recognized in many publications such as South Seattle Emerald, The Seattle Times, Crosscut Magazine, The Seattle's Child Magazine, The Children's Home Society of Washington Newsletter, and the West Hill Community 
newsletter. I'm sure uh, you'll hear uh, more about the, the website address, but it is womenunitedseattle.org. Uh, I hope that you will check it out, but hopefully not right now, because right now uh, Alicia is here. Alicia, your, your mic is open. Your stage is yours. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, it's an honor, and uh, I look forward to learning more about your organization. Thank you, Lenny. I'm glad to be here. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, as you said, I'm Alicia Kennedy. And yes, my journey does start with caregiving way, way back. You know, as far as uh, being a kid in a family of, of nine girls and, and one boy, you know, I was that middle child. So I took care of the, uh, the children that my sisters had. Uh, and then I also had to take care of the younger ones, getting them ready for school, combing hair, getting them dressed and cooking. So Caregiving is in my blood. Um, it's just been a journey. And I just look at it and, and know that, that whatever it was that I was doing, I was being trained for something else. But um, along my journey, you know, growing into a young woman and having my two kids, I always ran across women that seemed to be having uh, challenges. And I always stood beside those women because even though I came from a long, uh, large family, it didn't have very many opportunities for those uh, sisters to stand by me. So I always made a vow that um, I would always stand by a woman. If she comes to me and needed my help, that I would be there for her. But how my journey with kinship started is uh, uh, taking care of my nieces. I had two nieces that um, my uh, sister had given, well, she had given birth to the baby. And my mother was going blind in one eye. She had taken care of the majority of her her um, grandchildren. And at that time, there was no such thing as kinship caregiving. So, But she was an ultimate kinship caregiver. Well, when my sister gave birth to the youngest child, um, my mom contacted me and asked if I could kind of help out. And I had kind of been, lost my job at the time. So uh, I decided to go on and help. And I began to go over and check on the baby and, and the younger sister, or the older sister, which was seven. And um, there was much more help that was needed. And so I stepped in to do that. And what was supposed to be like three months just to give my sister a chance to get herself together turned actually into uh, almost 16 and a half, 17 years. I'm happy to report that those girls are doing well. And the youngest one that I raised uh, has her own child now. And, and she's cut from the same cloth. I can see some of the things she's doing that her mom did. Um, so um, make a long story short is that when oh, I was going on vacation and I had retired from my job, you know, and I'm ready to go and just do my thing. And I'm in Las Vegas having me a good time. Uh, let me roll back a little bit. Um, my son and his, his uh, girlfriend um, get, is, is gonna have a baby. And so he comes to me and um, lets me know. So I go and take her and get all the medical stuff done to make sure she's okay. But then, you know, with the lifestyle they had, they kind of disappeared. And then I um, got a call that the uh, child was born, my granddaughter was born. And I um, was more or less like, okay, I'll come down in the morning to see uh, the baby. I wasn't gonna drive at night. So I went down in the morning to see the baby and, uh, and she was, you know, hooked up to tubes and stuff like that. I thought everything was going to be okay. But then I, got, I go on and take my vacation and I get a, a, a call while I'm in Las Vegas. And my son tells me that the uh, CPS is not going to release the baby to them. And, you know, my immediate thing was more or less like, um, well, I already raised two kids, you know, um, of my nieces. And I don't, I don't think I want to take this on. But the minute I hung up the phone, I knew that I had to take it on. And, you know, what what would the alternative be? And I definitely did not want the alternative. So I, I stepped up to, to take care of my granddaughter. And um, well, before she came to my home, I said she would be a, a angel of hope for children. And I put it on her door and stayed on her door. And um, I didn't have anything as far as uh, to take care of her. So I called somebody on Greg's list that I found and just so happened it was a gentleman that was going to be leaving 
and going over, going to another uh, state or whatever. He was military. And I told him my story that I was going to be getting an infant and I had nothing. And he told his wife and um, that um, following day, um, he, he pulls up in my house with a, uh, a truck full of everything that I needed to take care of a child. And even though I had all of the things, it was just such a blessing. I was still afraid because I hadn't had a baby in my life in a, in a really, really long time. And I was like, okay, can I do this? And, and the whole time I'm thinking, I can't do this. I can't do this. But um, there was a little voice in me telling me to go to uh, raise. And I remember that when I was raising my nieces that I had her in roles, rolled in something called raise, but it was to help her through school. But the little voice kept saying, go to raise. So I packed this baby up and I took it to raise. That's called written area youth services. And I took her to raise in a little, in the little basket, you know, that we carry the carrier. And I went to the door and I just kind of told the people there what I was getting ready to take on. And I had no clue of what to do. And, and as I sat at the counter, uh, uh, telling the, um, the the ladies my story, uh, they began to cry. <laughs> and um, that was the beginning of um, being the kinship care, uh, being a kinship caregiver, which when I was raising my nieces, I knew nothing about, nor did I have any help or anything. So I got involved with Ray's and they helped me to just basically take that load off and to be able to understand that there were more caregivers out there like me so it got to a point where every visit that we would go there and it was just it was just good because it was being connected to something. It was a it was a sisterhood of of all of us going through the same thing. And as I would go there, I just wanted to give them something positive because a lot of times, you know, we got such a burden on us that it's really, really hard. And it's not so much of a burden. It's just the hardness of what we're doing and not that much support around it. So I would go in there and I write poetry. So I would either uh, recite poetry to the group at the beginning and the end of the meeting just to uplift those ladies in there. And it would just help uplift me to be uplifting them. And to, to make a long story short, I stayed with Ray's for quite some time. And then I decided that, uh, you know what, I had been doing um, my Women United organization since 1994. And it just evolved into helping women that were in different type of crises to helping uh, my mother, helping my father, helping my sister that was in a wheelchair. And then, you know, the, the last part was just taking care of my father, my nieces. And this was going on all at the same time. And then when I got Aaliyah, it, it was like, OK, God, if you're going to give me this little child, would you please give me something to go with it? And to go what he gave me was... Uh, the Angel of Hope Engagement Center that is my home and it's designed to basically to have caregivers be able to come and have a respite spot, but not only that, to keep the connection with the children so they have a place to play while the caregivers are getting their respite. They're 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 separated, but they're together. And it is just a beautiful thing. And um it, there's been other organizations that I I mean uh, programs that I've added to the Angel of Hope Engagement Center. And um, so it's providing that respite for the grandmothers. It's it's doing uh, the love train. And I think I got completely off track here because I'm supposed to be going over my um, my slide. So with that, I'm going to have you go to uh, slide number three, which talks about the love train. And the love train is basically uh, I do it every year, sometimes twice a year, and it brings the uh, uh, the community together. The Love Train is an annual event, and the purpose is to bring the unity to our community by gathering the neighbors and the, and supporters, and we do vendors, and we give away uh, gently used clothing, and um, we dance in the street. And I actually have a train, and it is a, a, it was constructed by a mathematical engineer, so you can put the straps on, and there's four cars, and everyone, four people to get in it and we'll play the, the music to the love train, and then you can they dance up and down the street. But the, the, the thing of it is, is to get everybody dancing, to get everybody feeling good, and we provide them with a meal. Um, we, we give away backpacks. It's just really a cool event. 
And with Women United, I also um, do the Pepper Pot Kinship Group. That's the Pepper Pot Kinship Group is a support group for the grandmothers. And I call it that because it was my mother's favorite soup, if you ever heard of it, was made by Campbell's. And what it and and the thing about the Pepper Pot Kinship Group is I consider us grandmothers that are adding spice to our life. So we want to do things that are lifting us up, but lifting others up too. Um, if you go to uh, slide number uh, uh, four, we'll talk about the Angel of Hope Engagement Center, which I gave you a little bit on it. And the Angel of Hope Engagement Center does a lot. We have a kinship carnival that we do. Um, we also do a backyard social where the grandmothers can come and relax and listen to some jazz and we serve food. And um, it's just a good time, a relaxing space where they get to talk about old things. But the other thing that's really good about it is because if we don't have our saxophonists to play, we listen to old school music. And you hear the grandmothers take up talking about, oh, I remember that song and what they were doing at that time. And it's just a, it's just a really good relaxing place, like more or less like sitting around the table back in the day when our mothers were coming up. She's the inspiration behind the Angel of Hope Engagement Center. This was on her door before I even received her to my home. And and, and it was just uh, uh, Leah, the Angel of Hope for Children. So what that meant was whatever I did for her, I was going to do for other children. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Um, Grandma's Hands is a program that I uh, implemented under the Angel of Hope Engagement Center and Women United. And what that was is, uh, uh, let me go step back one, one. Threads of Change was the first uh, program that I did, and that was funded by the city of Seattle. It was an innovative program that they gave me my very first grant for. And what that was was to um, get the grandmothers to basically pull those talents and things that they had off the shelf that they weren't able to do when they got the, the children in their life. And so the city of Seattle funded me to start this program, Threads of Change. And what I did was I um, started a class at the Skyway uh, Firehouse um, that um, gave grandmothers a chance to uh, get their sewing machines off the shelf and let's start sewing and let's start making things. So they did. And they graduated from the class. And what they graduated into is uh, Grandma's Hands. And Grandma's Hands is significant because it's our hands and it's been our hands for history that have molded our children and that have molded their lives. So grandma's hands would make pajamas and pajama bags and pajama boxes. And these boxes and bags were basically um, giving to a uh, Catholic community service so that they could distribute these bags to kin uh, kinship kids that are just coming into the system. And they were getting to uh, be in place with the grandmother so it would be like a welcome package for those children to come in and have something that was of their own. And the pajamas would say, um, the t-shirts would be I Fly. And I Fly to me, uh, the acronyms of it is inspiration, faith, and love for our youth. So if you got a t-shirt, it would say I Fly with faith. I Fly with peace. I Fly with love, strength, hope, courage. Any of the words that's going to put a positive a seed into the life of that child or that family. And uh, Grandma's Hands didn't only do that. We also, um, when the pandemic came, uh, we had the grandmothers that were really, really kind of really having a hard time. One of them did get COVID. And so we had to do something to kind of keep her lifted up and keep the others out of depression because of it. Even though they went through that, I had to come up with something that would help pull them out, lift them up again. So we started a mass project of making the face masks that was funded by Best Starts for Kids. It was it was great. And we made face masks, lots and lots and lots of them. And then we took them down to the local stores. Even though we were masked up, we did our distancing, we had our gloves, and we distribute those face masks to the, the women, men, children, anybody that came by, we would give them a face mask. And that was just a really good project. And I'm really pleased to be have been able to do that for our community. Um, if you would go to the next slide, please, that would be slide. Uh, next slide. Okay, so Women United um, is now being funded by um, the, uh, King County Veterans Seniors um, 
human services levy. And we are doing uh, some really um, good things. Um, I have been basically uh, doing things with the community. Uh, we have a kinship carnival that's gonna be coming up pretty soon that's open to the community and kinship to be able to come and have this carnival. During pandemic, though, we had to, I had to basically make a private carnival because those kids have been stuck in for so long. And I know how I felt and I know how my granddaughter felt who was seven years old and I had to do something. So I decorated the yard as a carnival, everything, the balloons, the tent, the little carnival boxes for lunch, um, the carnival music, the uh, uh, teeter-totter merry-go-round, the train was in it, and we opened it up and made private carnivals for those kinship caregivers. And we had like a good little participation for the time that we did it. We got about five or six Samp families that uh, were able to come once a week and experience that. And when they left, they were able to leave with a t-shirt that said Kinship Carnival 2020, and it was personalized with the child name, and they would leave with a little bouquet of balloons. So that was really something good to do. And I loved it. Um, gosh, it's just like, what else? Um, but I did put out um, uh, a video, which is a uh, outreach video that we are doing to basically just let you know a little bit more, not only from my perspective, but from the perspective of other people. And, um, and just to know that Women United is a loving, open organization. And I just need people to know that there are grandmothers out there that uh, do need help. They do need support. You may know them or somebody else may know them. And we need to reach out to them wherever they are and make sure that we wrapped our arms around them and bring them in. You never know what a grandmother is going through, regardless of what else she might be doing. So, you know, we really need to reach them and uh, bring them to a space that is basically full of love and full of life. And um, you can, you know, visit my Facebook page or my website, but I want you to always remember that Women United is here to lift you up. And I look forward to speaking to any other grandmothers that come my way or anybody else that has any questions about my organization. And my next um, event that I have coming up is called, it's a family affair because that's what kinship is. We're taking care of families. And not only are we taking care of families, we're coming up, becoming a family amongst each other. And we need to remember that, that that is so important. We are a family amongst each other. So, I appreciate you all. And if you have any questions, feel free. Thank you so much, Alicia. Really, really uh, a touching story. And, and what you're doing for so many years uh, is it makes so much uh, difference in people's uh, lives and, and grandparents. I, um, I didn't grow up in this country. I grew up uh, in the former Soviet Union. And the grandparents are very revered. Uh, in our culture, but there's there really isn't uh, any kind of support like that that I'm aware of. So this is great to see in the United States and in your community. And uh, um, uh, thank you for for your presentation. Uh, I I know you have a YouTube video. We will share the link. I would like to invite to the stage uh, a colleague of mine uh, in the planning unit at Aging Disability Services. Uh, and uh, uh, who introduced me to Alicia, Karen Winston. Uh, and uh, Karen, uh, Karen is a, a guest moderator today on the show. Uh, and, I, and I was wondering, Karen, is there anything else that came through in the Q&A? Any questions or feedback for Alicia? Okay, yeah, it looks like we had two questions. Uh, the first one, Alicia already answered. It was, uh, she, as she talked about the support that Women United offered um, community during the pandemic, and she talked about the masks that the grandmothers made. Um, the second question has to do with the family affair event. Um, can you say more about that event and, event and how people can support that event? Yes. It's called It's a Family Affair. And if you know Sly and the Family Stones, that, that song will just lift you up. And it, it pretty much kind of gives me uh, the thought about caregiving, you know, because we have children that are really, really good and children that may not be so good, but you got to love them all. 
And It's a Family Affair is going to be a fundraiser. And it's going to be really, really nice, I believe. Um, it's going to be held at the Angel of Hope Engagement Center. And we will be talking about the history of uh, kinship caregivers. Because if you go back and just think about it, you know, way back in the slavery days, you know, uh, uh, mom may have been in the big house and dad was in the field. So then if that was the case, then who was taking care of the kids? Doing the, doing the cooking, I mean, doing the cooking for the kids, cleaning, uh, also making their clothes. And I know that just from my grandma <laughs> mm -hmm. is that, you know, the things that they did and they, they kept, they kept the kids grounded. So grandmothers are very, very important. So, uh, yes, the, um, it's a, it's a family affair will be held at the Angel Book Engagement Center. And if you go to my website, you will see the whole, uh, flyer on there regarding that. It will be a two hour event. Um, it'll be music. There will be, um, other people speaking about their grandmother experiences being raised by a kinship caregiver. Um, yeah, so they'll just be, you know, you, you, I want you to be surprised. <laughs> so, yeah, so if you go to the website, womenunitedseattle.org, um, and, and, and check it out, I would love for you to attend. Come join us. Great. And it looks like that's it for the questions. Thank you, Alicia. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Karen. Uh, I, I just saw something else come through from one of our colleagues uh, 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 by the name Gemma. And she says, I just wanted to shout out uh, to Alicia and thank her for her dedication, continued work, and contributions to local families through Women United. So, so that uh, that came through here uh, in the Q and A just recently. So, so let's see if we can uh, unmute some folks on the phone and see. Uh, thank, thank you so you. much for being. Oh, and I heard somebody say thank you. Did everybody hear that? Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you for letting me in on the uh, meeting. Absolutely. Did you have a, a, a message or a, a comment for Alicia today? I thought that was an incredibly good presentation, and I'm glad there's a support system out there for any grandparents, any grandmas who are have been forced to circumstance to raise grandchildren instead of you know being having the later years to themselves. I'm glad there's a support system for them. Thank you. Yeah, so important. And, and, and thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us on the phone. Um, and um, thank you for, uh, uh, for, 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 your, for your kind words at the end here. Well, uh, I think with that, uh, we're, we're out of time. Thank you, Alicia. And thank you, Karen for uh for being here we did have uh another women's organization that we featured in a program earlier this year it was immigrant women's community center so it's so important to to to, to feature these community um you know movements really is what they are and so so thank you again for finding the time to be here uh we'll put it up on youtube i'll, I'll let you know when that's posted and with that uh, i want to go ahead and close this out uh, uh thank you all so much um, thank you, Alicia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And keep thank up you the for good all work. of you that have joined us. Yeah, keep up the good work. We appreciate all you're doing for our kinship caregivers in the community. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I hope you'll you'll come back uh, on uh, July fifteenth uh, uh, for our next. Uh, uh, event, which is the Civic Coffee Hour, and then in a month's time, if you uh, so so the very uh, first uh, uh, Thursday of August, which is August fifth, uh, we'll well we'll look forward to seeing you here again. Just use the same link bit.ly forward slash hfriendlylive. But um, we'll 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 see you all later. Thank you all so much, uh, and take care. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.